needle on the record. Get a shot up. This is for the win. This is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Sports Talk there, Tim. Uh, I want to do a little bit of a video today. I want to dispel the Gordon Hayward for Julius Rockin' Mike the Randall stupidity that I'm seeing over the internet. I want to talk about the Jalen Brunson, the, the tempering that's potentially coming over to the Knicks, and Carmelo Anthony. Is he a fit for this team, or should we just let him go? Bye, bye, bye. Uh, first, first, you know what? I... I I keep seeing this on Twitter, and I see it on. Uh, I don't even. Wa- I don't even watch the videos when I see them on Twitter and anything. But I see these stupid thumbnails about Gordon Hayward for Julius Randle. Okay, if you think that is a good trade for the Knicks, and you either have a YouTube channel, a Twitter account, an Instagram account, or whatever, cancel it. Turn it off. Stop. Stop the stupidity. Stop for. Stop. Stop the likes, the bleeps, and the boops. Just stop, please. I can't deal with stupidity anymore. Just stop. You're not going to give away Randall for Hayward. It, it just doesn't make sense. You look at Randall right now, and yes, his career is what they would refer to as peaks and valleys. And, you know, two years ago, we had the peak. We saw what the best of Julius Randall could be. We saw it. We, 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 we witnessed it. You know, we witnessed him putting up 24 points, 10 rebounds. And we saw six assists. We, we, we see what he can be. But the problem is, I think he's somewhere between what we saw in 2021, 2022, and what he was with the Pelicans back in 18 and, uh, 2018, 19 season. And, you know, in that season, in that 18, 19 season, he had 21 points, eight and a half rebounds, three assists, three assists. And people forget, they use that as the pinnacle of his career, but he only started 49 games that year and averaged 30 minutes. He had his career year in 2021, and he also had his career in reference to total of minutes played, games, minutes played per game at 37.6. Last year, he went down to 30 point, uh, excuse me, 35.3. He had 20 points, of course, 9.9. Total rebounds, five assists. The sister's still there. The rebounds are still there. It's just we got used to seeing something the year prior that made us that made us dream and think that he is going to be this this all time Nick legend. When it was just, it was a very good season. I said it before; it's a good season. So his career, if you kind of look at it. It's kind of like I said; it's peaks and valleys a little bit, but it's very consistent. Outside of that anomaly in 2021, but he's a far more, I'm not going to say polished player than Gordon Hayward, but he's, he is a better component for this team than any, than anyone else right now that we could either trade for or that we could turn around and, and, and potentially, well, basically we could just trade for, we'd have to just trade for because of the contract, but he is a better component right now, unless you are making a blockbuster trade. And going to Charlotte and getting getting Hayward's contract means nothing. It's it's he is not the player he was four years ago. Randall at 27, 28 still has the ability to be a guy that's gonna score maybe give you 22 points, 10, 10 rebounds, five assists. I'm happy with that. As long as he gets his shooting percentage, his field goal percentage up again, because he had a career low outside of his rookie season with the Lakers. But as long as he gets that percentage up, as long as he gets his keeps his three point, he's not going to hit four point. Excuse me, point four eleven or forty. You know, he's not going to hit forty one percent from the three point line. He's he's going to be more of a 30 percent shooter like he was last year. But he is a better fit for this team than anyone else. So if you see the stupidity, please turn a blind eye because that's what it is. All right. So now they're talking about Jalen Brunson. And sitting there, the Knicks are going to get hit with tampering punishment. So what? They're going to lose a second round pick for getting the point guard that they want. That happened to the Bulls in the Heat last year. <laughs> Who cares? Happened last year with the Lorenzo Ball and the Kyle Lowry, excuse me, Kyle Lowry signings. 
excuse me, Mike Lowry. Uh, and both teams back then were found. They engaged in early contact. So who cares? We're going to lose a second round pick for getting a point guard that we hope turns into something. A point guard who technically, you know, if you look at his career, does play unselfishly. A point guard who could potentially be an all star. And you're going to take away a second round pick. Well, you know what? I'm not that upset about that. I just love the fact that, and you know, and the thing is with the Mavericks, the Mavericks got mad because William Leslie appeared courtside for the, for one of the Mavericks home game, one of the playoff games against the Jazz. And that left the Mavericks quite frustrated. Who cares? The kid wasn't coming back to you. Leave it be. He's a Nick now. Good or bad, right or wrong or indifferent, if you like the signing or not, he's a Nick. And that's where, and that's the that's the player we got. That's the player we wanted. Is he going to be the player that we hope? I don't know. But who cares? <laughs> don't care. Take a second round pick. You know what? Take two second round picks. I got I got eleven of them. I keep seeing that there should be a Carmelo Anthony reunion. Listen, I'm a Melo fan. I, I'm not going to lie. I thought his career here was he he was he was a he was a memorable Nick. He was a good Nick. He didn't, he didn't come in outside of that one season and, you know, in reference to winning, he set the world on fire. Carmelo's career is mainly going to be remembered for, 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 for his personal achievements, not his team achievements. So would you want to bring him back into the fold? 10 time all-star six memorable, six memorable season with the Knicks. Would you want to bring him back? To be a rotational player. All right, that Vinny Johnson microwave scoring off the bench. Have that re- have that reunion. Have that 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 warm fuzzy feeling before his re- before he retires. I mean, people are, people should remember Carmelo more for his days with the Nuggets than the Knicks. But they're always going to remember how he forced his way out of Denver, and and people need to remember this about Carmelo. Carmelo has been selfish throughout his career. He's 38 now, so he's reflecting back on it. He forced the trade out of Denver to New York that year, and it had to be that year because the CBA was changing the following season, and he was going to get less money if he was not traded before the CBA changed. So it's always been about money for Melo. Now, now I'm like I said, he's been ch- he's been trying to chase a ring, going over to Portland, going to Los Angeles. I'm not thinking a reunion would be in the best interest of this young franchise. You don't want to stunt the growth of some of your players. It's fun to talk about. It's fun to it's fun to ponder, but I just don't see it as a as a need. It's more of a, I think it's more of a want. And in some ways I think it's more of a fan want, but I, he, he's just, the vibe isn't to, to me. The vibe just isn't there for the mellow. We got a lot of fun videos coming up in the next couple of weeks. And again, this is Tim with online big blue, bringing you the best in New York, Knicks sports talk entertainment. And as always, if you can like, if you can subscribe, if you're ring that button, you know what it means. That'd be awesome.